And Judge Chutkin uh, did not mince words in her ruling. Uh, guys, uh, writing in part, Trump's four-year service as commander-in-chief did not bestow on him the divine right of kings to evade the criminal accountability that governs his fellow citizens. Uh, Caitlin, Judge Chutkin uh, almost seems to relish a little bit sort of getting up in Trump's grill on some of these issues, it seems, if I could use non-legal parlance. She's uh, a good writer. Yeah, she we'll is. We'll say that. Yes, she's a sharp yeah. writer. Uh, she's a very sharp judge. And in this yeah. case, a lot of these cases turn, they win or they lose on what happens before the trial, what the judges do on these big legal questions. Donald Trump was making a very big bid here to get this case tossed, saying that because he had been the president at the time that this had happened, he had some protections. He wanted there to be an immunity because of the Constitution, and because of the presidency. And Judge Chutkin said, this just isn't in the Constitution. It's not what the people who wrote the Constitution wanted to allow for presidents, uh, and that if former presidents did didn't have the ability to be prosecuted for things that they did in office, then that would not be a uh, part of what the Constitution wants us to have as equal justice under law. She says it's essential to be able to bring cases like this to have justice work in this country. And so she denied Trump these, these arguments he was making, but this is a really big issue. Issue, um, that has to get settled and now we have the judge ruling on this and saying let's go we're gonna move to trial there are some yeah. a couple other things she has to look at and say whether she will you know toss certain charges in this case um, and and some other things he's argued but this was the big one yeah Shannon it sounds like the, the Trump uh, defense uh, strategy is to say uh, immunity then immunity now immunity forever I mean he just he wants immunity from everything uh, what's your uh, analysis of, of what uh, came down from the judge yesterday uh, I think it's a very good analysis very sound uh, just like in the civil matter the Court of Appeals reasoning was very sound too I do think um, from my legal analyst perspective it's a little bit of much ado about nothing on the constitutionality issue no question it's the constitutional law interpretation but it's so fact specific to this particular president. I mean, yeah, it'll rise again the next time we have a former president running for election who's charged with 91 counts. So he obviously is trying to wield a lot of times the First Amendment you know, as his defense here. It's all pretty much of a red herring, though, because, of course, common sense, non-lawyers would say, of course, a former president can't have a permanent get-out-of-jail-free card, as she wrote. It makes perfect sense not to do that. But our legal system tries to be so fair that no matter how off the argument is you got to wind through the system that way and of course this will cause more delay but on a legal grounding it's very very solid yeah and I do want to ask you about that point in just a moment but Caitlin we also saw a similar ruling from an appeals court on the issue of these civil lawsuits it sounds like a, a similar outcome yeah, a lot of people, yeah. including Judge Chutkin, were waiting to see what the D.C. Circuit mm. would do on these civil lawsuits. So a bunch of people had filed lawsuits against Jan Donald Trump, trying to hold him accountable for January 6th, that attack on the Capitol. My count, eight lawsuits at the very least, were all on hold waiting for this, mm. including a lawsuit before Judge Chutkin. Just on Wednesday, she was saying, we're waiting to see when this is coming. And this decision came out from the D.C. Circuit saying um, that there is no ability um, to have immunity broadly for what Donald Trump was saying and doing while he was the president. There's a difference between presidential speech and campaign speech, even if you're the sitting president running for re-election. There is going to be an opportunity for Donald Trump in these lawsuits to go and argue the facts, whether or not what he said on January 6th was part of his campaign or whether it was part of his governance. Uh, but. That decision is another really big one that Judge Chutkin even cited in her criminal case decision. We have an appeals court weighing in now on this question of immunity, and those cases, too, are going to be able to go forward at least a little bit for yeah, now. Yeah. And, and, Shan, I mean, do you think we're going to see this issue of presidential immunity uh, end up at the Supreme Court? And, I, and to that end, it goes back to the point you were saying earlier. If they keep throwing these things out in front of these judges, various challenges on all sorts of different grounds, I mean, one would think at some point they're going to be successful in delaying some of these these trials and, and maybe the, the federal election interference trial uh, that has been scheduled for March may not happen in March if they're successful. What do you think? Uh, I think there is a pretty good chance that they'll be successful in delaying at least some of these trials past yeah. the election. Uh, the 
the one in Florida about the classified documents issue, it, it's complicated just on logistics because there's classified material. Uh, in D.C., no question, Jack Smith tried to really streamline this, maximize the chances of, of doing it fast. Trudkin's moving very fast. I think the Supreme Court probably will take the case just because it screams constitutional issue, even though I kind of wish they wouldn't take it. <laughs> but. Yeah. And yeah. the immunity question in right. the criminal case in yeah. D.C. with Judge Chuck in January 6th, that has to be settled right. before Dr Trump goes to. to trial. It has yeah. to be as a right for a criminal defendant. Yeah, they could decline to take it after the Court of Appeals, but I, I don't think they Do will. you think the Supreme Court could come down on the side of Trump and saying, yes, you have immunity in that case? I, I think legally it's very unlikely. Uh, they haven't shown themselves to be particular fans of his arguments, uh, and this one really seems like a no-brainer that that's a yeah. weak argument. All right, very good. Uh, Caitlin Shan, thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you.